Hi, this is your host, Sablin Bharti, and welcome to our special series of interviews for the LF Energy Spring Summit. And today we have with us Matija Naglik, R&D advisor at Tenet. Matija, it's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, tell me a bit about Tenet. What problem are you trying to solve in the energy sector? Well, uh, Tenet is the leading transmission system grid operator uh, of Netherlands and parts of Germany. We design, build, maintain and operate the high voltage electricity grids. And of course, we are committed to providing a secure and reliable supply of, of electricity and to playing our role in driving the energy transition. And of course, here comes the challenge with the energy transition. The grids are changing uh, because of the environmental commitments society set. And those changes actually impose new challenges related to operation of power system. And together with ever evolving energy markets, especially cross-border trade, this further increase the complexity um, and we expect that practically on the, uh, based on the projected energy scenarios, the tools and systems the operators are using to control the power system will become insufficient in the future. I see two trends here. One is that our consumption of energy is increasing. If we, we talk about cloud, we don't want cloud to go down, but if the power goes down, none, none of the cloud, nothing else will work, number one. Number two is we are kind of also becoming producer of energy because a lot of people, they have solar, Tesla has made a lot of inroads, people are storing cells uh, power in their batteries. So it is also changing the way power was flowing through the grid. So uh, can you talk about how that has has changed twofold. Uh, the consumption have increased and we have also kind of become producer. And then we are also, there are a lot of new sources of energy, you know, renewable are there, windmill is there. So uh, talk about what pressure it's putting on the grid. And that's when we can talk about what you mentioned was the control room for future, because we have to look at all these scenarios uh, when we build something like that. Yeah, uh, indeed, the energy consumption is increasing and it will increase also it's expected to increase also in the future and uh, what we are seeing is that we have more and more this uh, pres presumers so active consumers that can produce and also consume energy what we are seeing is uh, so-called active distribution grids so uh, that uh, typically or uh, the uh, DSOs consume electricity while in this case we are seeing that they also start to push energy back to the grid and of course, that affects the way how the grid is operated. And uh, here, are, here we are experience, experiencing a lot of challenges. Um, maybe it's interesting in the next following 10 years, we expect to have large amount of wind uh, energy coming from the offshore uh, platforms. We are talking about around 20 gigawatts of energy. And of course, um, that has certain impact on the grid and uh, that's something what we would like to prepare our operators so that they have the right set of tools uh, available to control and operate the grid reliably as we did so far. Right. Uh, if I ask you to just hold a crystal ball and tell me what would the control room of future look like? Uh, you already mentioned a lot of scenarios, but let's look at the, the, the solutions point of view. Well, uh, our operators will be still at the heart of the control room, but their role will practically evolve. Uh, operators will be trained to be uh, supervisors of automated systems and will be able to intervene and override the automation when uh, necessary. They will also have so-called improved situational awareness, improved controllability of resources and network equipment, and will be guided by advanced decision support technologies in real time. The idea is that the system will be operated proactively, meaning that potential issues as well as solutions will be identified advanced, uh, advanced in time, and that the uh, proposed actions will be optimized by value and system impact. The control future will integrate applications, data models, data source, sources, and will have also optimized and standardized human machine interfaces. Can you also talk about how much role is open source playing or going to play 
in the, the, the future control rooms that company like Tenet are building? So that's a very good question, uh, because the challenges uh, we, Tenet TSO, are facing are more or less similar to all TSOs and DSOs globally, in particular to uh, the st stakeholders of pan-European power system. And I think um, Linux Foundation Energy is a really great uh, platform where we can uh, jointly co-develop uh, the needed developments. And the, 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 the greatest part is, uh, is, is about improving or speeding up the innovation and also uh, lowering the associated financial costs. So can you talk about, you know, as you're building this, you know, not only just uh, the control of future, but if you look at the overall industry in general, uh, the en energy sector, what role is open source playing in helping these companies to not only you work in the R&D space, so you do know open source does help in cutting the cost of R&D at a grid because a lot of companies are collaborating on that base technology. So talk about the role that uh, open source is playing in the energy sector, whether it is a control room or beyond that. Well, that's a, that's a very good uh, question because the challenges Tenet TSO is facing are common to most TSOs and DSO globally, in particular to the uh, stakeholders of pan-European power system. Hence, to speed up the energy transition and optimize the associated financial burden, the required control room developments can be tackled collectively. And uh, I see open source, uh, Linux Foundation Energy open source community as a great uh, opportunity. Open sourcing energy sector is relatively new, uh, but actually that opens a totally new spectrum of opportunities which we haven't used so far. In particular, we can really speed up the developments by joint developments and uh, also decrease the associated financial burden required uh, associated with those developments. So I think uh, we should really join the forces and co-develop things that are needed by most of the TSOs in globally. Can you talk about how is Tenet involved with NF Energy? Number one. Number two is that the event is coming up what kind of participation we are expecting from Tenet at the event? Yeah, Tenet is a member of Linux Foundation Energy and we participate in discussions in different working groups uh, where we defined, uh, de defined the roadmaps uh, together with other uh, stakeholders. I will talk about the control room, in particular about the research and development roadmap uh, that we recently uh, created on this topic. In particular, I will talk about the process that ultimately led to the roadmap and also about the 35 technologies and methodologies uh, that we are proposing uh, that needs to be developed. Matija, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only Tenet, but actually sharing the glimpse of, uh, because we don't think about energy that much in today's world, but the fact is that energy is actually our lifeline. You know, that's where everything relies on. Uh, so glimpse that you gave about how the control room of the future will look like. And we are all excited to hear your talk uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to the next week.